going to go on a little ride and go down the road that was the first road I ever rode a spider down. What would this be all about? And should have I considering just pulling a U-turn and going the other way? Local officers working some form of incident. Yep, wouldn't wad it up, little car. Anyways, this story about my first ride kind of lead into a little bit was uh, saw pictures of my cousin Dave's spider a couple of years well last year on Easter he showed up down at my cousin's house with it and I'd already left but I saw the pictures and I said well that looks like a lot of fun so I started doing some research and because I've been trying to figure out some type of toy to buy in my adult years and get my butt out of the chair and motorcycle didn't seem to make much sense because all the bikes I'm comfortable on were the great big ones and I don't know, it doesn't seem to make, make, make much sense to go out and try to learn how to ride a motorcycle on a, you know, a 900 to 1100 pound machine. So, uh, that was out of the question, but I've been thinking about snowmobiles. I was thinking about maybe buying, uh, a sea doo or something like that or a snowmobile for the winter time but all those particular options didn't seem all that exciting to me because you needed a trailer to take them someplace to use them and I don't know I don't really have room for a trailer in my little driveway and it didn't seem to make much sense to me and then I saw pictures of Dave's spiders and the wheels started turning and I started doing my research and reading reviews and watching videos and researching costs and yada yada yada. And after three or so weeks it's like, alright, maybe I can look further because I was actually planning to buy a new truck that year too. And or last year and didn't see how I could quite pull both off if I sat around for a whole year on the idea well I'd probably talk myself out of it I do that a lot the reason why I've never owned anything like this in my life probably but anyways after researching it a bit I figured well I gotta find a place to go test ride one I'm not going to go out and spend this much money on something that I have no idea whatsoever if I'm going to be comfortable on it or like it or whatever. So I found a place uh, out here. It's about nine miles from my house out here in Moltenboro called the Silva Motorsports. And they are listed as dealers. So one afternoon after work, I decided to come on out and take a look. Oh, in front of me could put an egg on her gas pedal and not break it when she accelerates. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, just pointing it out. So yeah, I came over here and they had two of them sitting outside. There's a black one which was a touring model and my research told me that's the one I wanted because know just what I wanted to do on it I wanted to you know be able to throw all my cameras on it and maybe go on weekend trips and stuff and pack a little overnight bags and whatnot and it just had some more ride comfort features to it and so forth and so on so it's like yeah I'm pretty sure I want the RT and when I Came over to the place, they, they also had a brand new 27 
R3 Touring, which is one year newer version of Patricia. It was a beautiful machine. It was all gray and but not, not necessarily the color I wanted, but it was nice. So I walked into their showroom and climbed on it and sat down. I was like, yeah, this seems all right. But I was more interested in the touring model and started talking to the guy and I don't know, he kind of seemed like he was going to think I was one of these guys going to ask a lot of questions, waste a lot of time and then not buy anything. But we chatted back and forth and I said, well, you know, I'm definitely interested. I just, uh, you know, I'd kind of like to test drive one before I bought it. And he says, well, that's understandable. Do you have your motorcycle license? And I said, no. Do you have your permit? And no. He says, well, get yourself a permit and uh, give us a call and we'll schedule you a test drive. And I was like, all right. It took me about three weeks to go through the whole process of get any appointment and studying but anyways this is the Silva's right here right on the corner they used to have a few of them sitting I had a few more of them sitting out this year probably sold them but uh, yeah so I studied up for the written exam and which is what you got to do to get your permit and took all kinds of online tests that simulate the test and I was feeling pretty confident because I never got more than one wrong and so uh, by the day the appointment comes and I go over there and I think I pass the test by the skin of my teeth because it was nothing like the online versions and I never really read the book I just took the sample test and figured I knew what I was doing but oh boy but anyways, I passed, and they handed me a permit. <laughs> Fools. And the place I took the test is actually about another 20 miles or 50 miles further. Down 25 there, and so on the way back, I took a left in there and said, All right, schedule me a ride. Showed him my permit, and he looked nervous. Probably rightfully so. But, uh... It was like two days he could uh, get some time because what they do is they have somebody ride with you and lead you so you don't do anything stupid especially if you've made it to them already that you haven't ridden a motorcycle in 40 plus years so anyways the day shows up and I show up and they loan me a helmet and I jump on the black one and let me say that differently. I jump on uh, the touring model, which happened to be black. They had two of them sitting out there. I'll show you a picture. And the black one's the touring model. Anyways, I jumped on that one. And the guys leading me jumped on this one and we set out. He gave me a quick run over of where everything was and say you can't do a wheelie on these things but the first time I twisted the throttle I tell you I got the front wheels off the ground yeah I guess gonna be a little lighter on that he's kind of looking at me shaking his head going oh this ain't gonna end well we check this boy's credit he's gonna be buying this one way or the other but we headed on out down this little road here and after about a mile I realized that that particular model was not for me. I was just uncomfortable. What happens is the Tory model has more of a cowling that comes out and that really locks your feet back um, a lot further and my knees are bent at more than a 90 degree angle and my knees just do not like that position whatsoever for any extended length of time. And extended length of time means anything more than four or five minutes, and they just start aching and feeling horrible. But I was having great fun. It seemed fairly intuitive and going up and down through the gears, probably a lot more than I needed to, but you know, it was fun. I enjoyed it. it seemed to handle all right. We were. I don't know, I'm doing 47 now. 
That is not admission to guilt. I'm just keeping up with traffic. But we're doing about the same speed down here and it felt comfortable, you know. Was, there's never any worries and whatnot. And I said, well, let's just keep riding. The other thing I didn't like about the position was where the brake pedal was on that one. It was back a little further. And it was next to impossible for me to naturally find it. I couldn't just move my foot. I literally had to pick my leg up and move it around until I felt pedal and step on it. Not exactly the best situation if you're trying to do an emergency stop. You know, I'm sure it'd get better as I got more comfortable on the bike, but funny I'm sitting there bragging about doing 47 else like a cop behind me. Well anyways it just uh yeah, I was stacking up and I was starting to get disappointed and saying, well, I'm going to have to be looking for another type of toy because I just, I'm not going to buy this. I can't do it. I will not be comfortable on it. But one of the things that I really did enjoy about the ride was that you see so much more when you're sitting outside of a car even more than you see when you're in a convertible because there's just nothing obstructing your view no posts nothing it's you know and i was just really enjoying it something that i know <laughs> i gotta stop looking around so much while i'm trying to film video vlogs because i know it drives people nuts but i don't know that's where all the pretty stuff is not out here on the roadways so i tend to look around a lot still But anyways, it's, God, I, ugh, if it was comfortable, I could really enjoy this. So started thinking about the Polaris Slingshot. But I tried to sit in one of those and, oh, good Lord, that's like trying to stuff a hippo in a Prius. It just doesn't freaking work. I need a crane to get me up out of the damn thing every time I get into it. And, uh, but if that was the alternative, you know, I'd have to reconsider anyways. But basically, you know, I've lived in the Lakes region for a couple years, years and years ago and whatnot. And I've been out and about and around and around, but I can swear to God, I've never been, I'd never been down this road before that particular day. And it's like, God, oh, this is a pretty ride out here. I really enjoyed it and then when we come around the next couple corners you'll see what why this has become one of my favorite little evening rides it's only about a 30 mile round trip but you got a little lighthouse to look at you get the marina you got hot girls walking on the side of the road <laughs> no dick Most of these are year-round campers. They just put a cover on them for the winter and move out. Worst ways to live, but look at how pretty this is out here. Just looking out across Moulton Harbor. And Ma and Pa kind of live over that way. coming out here and I park right in here in fact the picture of Patricia is taken right there that I use on my intro and outros nice place to watch the sunset with you can't see them but way off in the distance there's uh, you can see the windmills up in Plymouth But we kept on going, there's just another mile or so, we're now on what's known as Long Island. And there is a huge deer population out here because you can't shoot them out here. And so if you come out here at night time, you got to be a little bit careful because you might go around the corner and be staring at four or five deer. Or a couple of them might just jump out in front of you and try to scare you. And it's, they're fairly effective with that. It happened to me once last year. After sitting at the beach going home and it's just getting dark and 
I come up out of the place where the marina is there and go around a corner grabbing gears and, and then slamming on brakes because there's three deer standing there. Yellow. So, yeah, we get all the way out here and guy leading the way pulls a U-turn right up here and pulls over on the side and jumps off and I pull up beside him and he's like so what do you think and I said well I love everything about it except for the fact that I am thoroughly uncomfortable I can't see myself buying this because it is not at all comfortable it's not because I'm nervous it's not because I'm tensed up it's just that the way I'm seated here is not at all comfortable there's nothing about it that's comfortable so old dredging dock there I love coming out when I go out on a lake I like going with folks like cruising through all the islands out here there's a place called the broads it gets wicked choppy and windy and the waves get huge and it's rough as hell you can come in here and get in the lee of the islands and just put around and have a great time sipping on whatever beverage you happen to have with you and riding around the lake but yeah it's telling Jim uh, I was giving him all the reasons I wouldn't be buying it and he says well actually he says why don't we switch because this one's set up right now for the average height person but we can push the foot rests and the pedals and the brake pedal and everything forward another four or five inches for you and, uh, and stretch it out a bit I said you know and it's like you what what about the story he said, oh Christ we can order all that and set you up so we switched and I jumped on Patricia and about the time we get back to the beaches that I showed you on the way out here uh, I was just grinning ear to ear and I knew I was going to buy it it was so much more comfortable and even though the brake pedal still wasn't in the optimal position for me I knew that it would it could be made to fit and sure enough we get back to the shop and I went in and I was actually thinking of buying uh, still thinking of buying a 2017 but he got me this one with all the modifications I wanted on it and everything for a couple thousand dollars less like twenty five hundred dollars less and this is actually the color I wanted anyways when I was doing the research on them this was the color that they had available that really stuck out to me and uh, so uh, I think that was a Tuesday night, Tuesday afternoon that I did this, and the uh, guy says, well, we got, we're kind of backed up. I need a couple days to get it prepped, so why don't you come back over Thursday, and we'll, Thursday afternoon, we'll sign all the papers, and you can take it home. Well, it's like, cool. We did the deal right there, and two nights later, I was on my way to pick up Patricia. And I have never regretted that particular decision.